many ages from the time when God created the heavens and the earth, and then formed man and woman in his own image. Long after the great flood, when God made the rainbow shine forth as a sign of the covenant, twenty-one centuries from the time the promise was given to Abraham and Sarah, thirteen centuries after Moses led the people of Israel out of Egypt and Miriam danced for freedom, eleven hundred years from the time of Ruth and the judges, one thousand years from the anointing of David as king, and the fulfillment of the times and years and months and days discerned by the prophets. In the 194th Olympiad, the 752nd year from the foundation of the city of Rome, the 42nd year of the reign of Octavian Augustus, while the whole world enjoyed a span of peace, Jesus Christ, Eternal God and Son of the Eternal Father, desiring to sanctify the world by his most merciful coming, being conceived by the Holy Spirit, in nine months of growth in the womb of his mother, now in our own times, is the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, God made flesh.
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. And we who live in a land of deep darkness, on us the light has shined. God's word has become flesh and lives among us. This word is the light of all people. Behold, God's glory, glory as of a Father's only Son, full of our grace and truth.
And they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord. He is more mine 
than Mary's. For he was born for me. For the angel said, To you is born a Savior. But what about what comes next? Born. What do we make of that? Not appeared. Not arrived. Not come, emerge, or sprung up. Born. What does this mean? Is it significant that Jesus was born and didn't just fall out of heaven fully grown? And what difference does that make for us? What difference does that make for you? Ponder that as we go into the sermon today. Would you pray with me? <clears throat> may only God's word be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Amen. So, there was this elephant who was thoroughly enjoying himself as he splashed about playing in a river. And there was a mouse perched on the shore of the river. And it was obvious that the mouse was disturbed about something. And so the mouse yells at the elephant, come out of the water at once. The elephant laughs and says, why should I come out? The mouse is not about to be humiliated by this mountain of flesh. He keeps yelling and yelling, and the elephant realizes that if he wants to have any kind of peace and quiet and get on with his enjoyment, he better come out of the water and see what the mouse wants. So slowly the elephant, as elephants do, lumbers out of the water and stands towering over the mouse. And he says, now, what did you want me to come out of the water for? And the mouse looks up and says, I wanted to see if you were wearing my bathing suit. <laughs> now you might be scratching your head and asking yourself, rightfully so, I've not gone off my rocker, completely, not yet anyhow. Uh, you might be scratching your head, asking yourself, what does an elephant playing in a river, a cranky mouse, and a bathing suit have to do with Christmas? But I'm going to tell you it's rather straightforward, at least at one level. Christmas is a time that we celebrate, we honor, we remember God's incarnation, God's enfleshment as a human being. We Christians almost take it for granted that God became a human being. But when we step back and we seriously consider what it means, you see just how radical, just how tremendous this claim is. God became a human being. The divine became mortal. The eternal became temporal. The limitless became limited. God's incarnation as a human being just like us, not a superman, or partially godly and partially human, or partially spiritual and partially material, but a human being just like us. God's incarnation as a human being just like us reverses the way that we think things should be. It turns things completely upside down. Now, you might be thinking I'm making a mountain out of a molehill or that I'm hammering away at this idea, but I'm really not. When you step back and you look at the incarnation, it really does blow your mind what God has chosen to do in Jesus. It's easier for us to understand how an elephant could wear a mouse's bathing suit than it is for us to understand the awesome mystery of the Incarnation, God's Word made flesh. God wore our own suit of flesh, God's body suit. At its core, Christmas is about God's Word, in particular God's promise. Now God utter, or uttered this promise at the very moment of creation when darkness hovered over the face of the tumultuous deep. Let there be light. The very first words that God spoke were words of promise. A promise 
that brings order out of chaos, clarification out of confusion, and ultimately life out of nothingness. In the beginning, in the speaking of a word, God revealed himself as one whose word does something, affects something, creates something. God's word makes life. It changes things. Let there be light, and there was light. Time and again throughout history, God's word has proven faithful. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth, says God, through the prophet Isaiah. And it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Throughout history, when God made a promise, when God said something, God's word did it and did precisely what it was intended to do. It didn't come back empty-handed. God's promise always did the work that God spoke it to do. God's work completed the assignment he assigned to it. The promise to be a great nation with many descendants. The promise of deliverance from captivity under Pharaoh. The promise of a homeland desirable to all who would pass through. The promise of special relationship to be our God and we his people. Time and again throughout history, God's word has proven faithful. And so at Christmas we celebrate, we honor, we remember God's word fulfilled. But this time, in such a way that is different than we expect. When someone gives us their word, we expect them to keep their word. We hold facts with a certain level of assurance, depending on what we know about the one making the promise. Perhaps on past loyalty, to promises made before. Whatever the case may be, when someone makes us a promise, we have a certain level of expectation that it will come true. We trust that it will play out as they say. When a young boy's mother tells him they'll have cake for dessert after he finishes his Brussels sprouts, his trust in his mother's reliability to her word is strengthened when he finishes those Brussels sprouts and his mother gives him some cake. It's as simple as that. And so it is with all promises. When promises are kept, we, can, we come to believe more strongly. But what of the incarnation? What of God's inflection? In the beginning, when God first created life, God's word went out and accomplished what it purposed. In the same way, in the incarnation, God's word goes out and it accomplishes what it purposes. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. God became a human being. What does this mean? What does this mean? This means that God himself is in the midst of life with us. And the good, the bad, and everything in between. God as a human being, Jesus, Jesus, means that God is no longer some abstract, inaccessible deity perched on a throne some light years away in a far distant heaven. God is right here in front of us. And what's more, God is a fragile infant with all the needs of an infant. All of the needs. Suckling, sleeping, crying, loving, yes, even changing. Born that day, long ago, Jesus was just like you and like me as a baby. He depended on his mother and father for everything that he needed, for all of his care. He grew up. He learned. He experienced happiness. He experienced sadness. He got sick. He ran, he played with his friends, he got disappointed. He knew what it was to be a human being 
because he was a human being. God became truly human and lived among us. In Jesus, God's promise never to abandon us is made radically and tremendously clear. God desires so much to love us, to be close to us, in relationship with us, that God becomes one of us and lives completely with us. God desires so much to love us, to be close to us and in relationship with us, that God likewise dies completely with us. Jesus is not spared anything human, not even the cold of the grave. But it's for this that he came into the world, not to condemn us, but in order that we might be saved through him. God didn't go to all the trouble of becoming human in Jesus merely to tell us how bad we are came to help, to put the world right, came to strengthen the relationship he established with us before we were even born. He came to make clear the power of his promise that light is stronger than darkness, that love is stronger than hate, that goodness is stronger than evil, and that ultimately life is stronger than death. But what, what's more, he came to strengthen our faith the relationship that we have with God, to strengthen it and assure us that indeed darkness will not envelop us. Hate will not win out over us. Evil will not forever beleaguer us. And so by his birth, life, death, and resurrection, Jesus dignifies our humanity. Everywhere that humanity is lived out, including in our workplaces, in our homes, in our schools, wherever we are, and in all of our relationships. God is with us. And so we bring God's constant love with us, with his delight in our humanity. Wherever we go, to whomever we encounter, whenever that might be. Because it's not just in creating us, but also in coming to us and sharing in our flesh, and living among us, and wearing the suit of our bodies that Jesus has elevated our flesh to, and fusing all that we do as human beings with real human bodies, with the power of God. For just as God's word is fulfilled in Jesus, God's word never to abandon us and always be with us, so too is God's word fulfilled promising us that nothing can separate us from his love when Jesus, fully man and fully God, rises from death to life again. His life is our life. His light is our light. His goodness is our goodness. His love is our love. The incarnation of God and the real man of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that puts flesh on the promise of God. That makes God's word real for you and real for me and real for all who hear it. In Jesus, God chooses to put on a suit, a body suit, and lives life to the fullest, to the uttermost for us, amid us, for us, with us, and in the flesh of Jesus' body, we see with our very own eyes God's love made real for us. In his birth, we marvel at his faithfulness. In his life, we celebrate his companionship. In his death, we mourn his absence. And in his rebirth, we rejoice at his promise, a promise made not only in words, but in deeds, a promise not only given, but a promise incarnated. For us and for our salvation, God came down from heaven and put on a body suit, our body suit. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. To you is born this day a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of the Eternal Father, God made flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
by sending us his son. For the promise fulfilled, for the peace from above, and for our salvation, for the coming of your Son to redeem us and all creation, for the wisdom to know you and follow your commandments, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the Church Universal, its ministry, and the mission of the Gospel, for our Pastor Daniel, for our bishops, Jim and Elizabeth, and for all who labor in the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. For the well-being of creation, for abundant harvests, for adequate food for all, for careful use of natural resources, for animals, fish, birds of the air, and all living things. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. prayer. For peace and justice in the world, the nations and those in authority, for our President Donald and our Governor Charlie, for Pittsburgh and surrounding towns, for those in positions of trust and authority over others, especially police, firefighters, emergency responders, the military, doctors, and nurses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who experience hate, violence, and death at the hands of others. For the poor, oppressed, sick, bereaved, and lonely. For those who face persecution for their faith. For those shunned, for who they love. Lord, in your mercy, you hear our prayer. For Bethlehem and all the Holy Land. For Christians the world over. For peace and harmony where tensions are high, and courage to speak your word in the face of calamity. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those on our prayer list, and those we name aloud now. Mariah, Teddy, Lori, Alyssa. For all who travel, for all people who await from you great and abundant mercy, for those who work to bring peace, justice, healing, and protection in this and every place. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For this congregation and this parish, for faith to trust your promise, for hope to believe that love is stronger than hate, that light is stronger than darkness, that life is stronger than death, for the inspiration of your Holy Spirit to do your will in every walk of life, for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. For the glorious company of the apostles, saints, and martyrs, for all those who have gone before us in the faith, and are at rest in you. For loved ones who have died this year, for the trust to believe nothing can separate us or them from your love and your Son. Lord, in your mercy, and hear our prayer. prayer. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting only in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with these gifts, let them be a blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Now, Lord, be with you. Life 
death and resurrection until he comes again, as once he ascended the heights of heaven at your right hand, most blessed Father.
God is with us. Let heaven and nature sing. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Thank you.